Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Solomon King, and I'm the founder of an organization that generally is trying to accelerate science learning in Africa. We are best known for using a tool um, that is you know, most commonly referred to as robotics. And um, I want to share with you a few of our experiences that will help you understand how robotics can influence and transform science learning for young children, but also for adults. Um, for over 10 years, I have been working with young children um, across Uganda. I have been one of the teachers uh, from the very early days, uh, but as we grew as an organization, the other, other teachers began um, teaching our students. Um, but one of the experiences that I remember the most um, in the very early days was taking a taxi about um, 4.30 p.m. after work, um, taking a taxi across town all the way to Mukono district, deep in the villages, those kind of places where you need to take about three taxis to get there. And with each subsequent taxi, it gets more and more packed um, because you're just going deeper and deeper into the villages. And then the very last um, trip was on a border along a long, windy, dusty road up a hill into a school that was one of those schools that's, you know, very isolated. And I reached there to find a classroom full of extremely bored and tired kids. Um, this was a boarding school. Uh, so it was that time of the day when they're supposed to be outside playing and having fun and being excited um, about that little break between class time and evening preps. And there I was facing a group of kids who had been asked, actually they had been forced to wait for this visitor who was going to talk to them about this thing called robotics. Um, so I stood in front of the class and I'm, I was typically used to students being really excited about um, the work that we do. Like I'd pull out my laptop and then they would like crowd around very excited watching the robot CTC. But this particular class was just tired. They wanted nothing to do with what I was saying. And I looked at the class as I was teaching, I was getting a little bit tired, but I also knew that I had a trick that would change the dynamics of the room. Um, so after I'd given my brief theoretical introduction to robotics, I pulled out something from my bag, and it was this little tangle of wires and metal, and I told the kids, this is a robot. And you know, one or two people were like, eh. And I could hear someone in the back saying, why, you're lying, that's not a robot. And I was like, it is. And so I walked to the table and put it down. And so before I did that, one of the things I asked the class was, how many of you want to learn how to build a robot? And you know, one hand went up, another hand went up, and I'm like, oh, only two people? And then one third hand came up, and it was like it wasn't, they were not sure whether they actually wanted to learn uh, how to build a robot. So I went to the table and switched on the robot. And then immediately, the energy in the room changed. Because as soon as this little machine started walking across the room, the kids got up excited. They were extremely energetic. They started running over themselves to come closer and look at this thing. And it took a lot of work to get them to calm down. And when I looked outside the window, I saw that the entire um, classroom was full of students peeping from outside. Everyone had forgotten about this break time. Everyone had forgotten that they were supposed to be elsewhere. They were now really fascinated by this little machine that was, all it was doing was just walking across the room. Uh, so after a while, after a few demonstrations, I told the kids to go back to their classes. I noticed that there were more students in the class than had started. I don't know where these guys came from, but suddenly the room was more full than before. And so then I asked them again, who wants to build a robot? And this time, every single hand in the room was up. And after a long but fascinating training period that time, this was around 2012, on my journey home, I was reflecting on the lessons that I'd picked up from that day. Back then, you know, like I mentioned, it was just me in the organization. It was a hobby thing that I'd started. Uh, but I was just thinking about how that, how that went. And the thing that came to me was that 
the students had given me permission to teach them. As a teacher, one of the things that's really frustrating is when you realize that you do not have the student's permission to teach. You're basically standing in front of a classroom and you're talking and they don't really care. But the minute they tell you, I want to make that, how does that work? How does this thing work? They've basically given you the permission to take them on this wonderful and magical journey of learning. And if you've ever taught a group of kids before, if they're not excited about what they're learning, it will not be a good experience. But when they are curious, when they are passionate, when they want to understand the world, it becomes a completely different experience. So robotics for me has always been this magical tool of unlocking amazing new learning experiences for young children. Um, the, the sort of work that we do revolves around exposure, right? And for us, there is a very strong dynamic between the energy in a room when a student says, I would like to learn this. Because now, you can actually tell them, all right, let's sit. This is where we are going. This is where we're going to end up. But this is where we need to start. And so the journey becomes a journey of exploration, a journey of fun, a journey of excitement, a journey of um, magical learning experiences. Robotics creates very strong cognitive experiences for children. Because if your goal is to get this machine across the room, then you have to solve a lot of problems. And the problems that appear in that space are not problems that you expect. All right? um, you have to avoid obstacles, etc., etc. But within all of that, the child is learning how to program, because the robot needs to be programmed in order to move. But if the child has never used a computer before, they're also learning how to use computers. We work with students deep in the villages, and many of them have never touched a computer before. So watching them learn how to use a computer so that they can learn how to program the robot so that the robot can do the thing that they want to do is a really fascinating experience because the learning is coming from inside. It's coming from within their desire to achieve a goal and a target. And they also learn electronics, they learn mechanical systems. All of these are basically part of the journey to get this robot to move. But it goes beyond that. If you put students in a group and tell them that, look, let's explore this journey together. Let's build this robot and let it do this thing. You're opening up additional learning experiences like soft skills. So you're getting, uh, you're getting young children to do teamwork. You're getting young children to do project management and do presentations. One of our lead instructors always reminds us that soft skills are not skills that you learn in isolation. They're skills that you learn through doing, through constant implementation. You do not teach someone how to communicate by having a lesson on communication. You teach someone how to communicate by constantly creating them in environment, putting them in environments where they need to be communicating. So these soft skills become a part of the learning process. They become an embedded part of this journey. And all this time, all the child just wants to do is build a robot. But you've created so much that is now really exciting for them, and they want to continue working on this little thing to get it to move. But it doesn't really stop there. Um, for a lot of um, children, as they grow older, the learning experiences change. We have parents who come to us and say, um, my child likes playing with a remote. I think he's going to be an engineer. I'm like, no, your child is two years old. He's discovering the world. Every child plays with a remote. Um, and then parents who tell us, oh, my child is a genius because they can unlock my phone. I'm like, yeah, they're just watching you. All right? um, but we get a lot of parents who are excited about particular journeys that they want their children to take. And I always encourage parents to let their children explore. Because that's how children learn. They learn by studying the world around them. They learn by teaching, sorry, by touching, by sensing, by smelling, by all sorts of, the basic learning for them is a very intrinsically explorative process. And robotics gives them a fascinating avenue to do that. Um, also, as the child grows older, they begin getting more interests, right? So little Agatha, your darling seven-year-old daughter today wants to be a ballerina. 
Tomorrow she wants to be a footballer. The next day she wants to be a doctor. The third day she wants to be a farmer, but also a pilot. What she's doing is basically telling you, I'm interested in these things, and I want to see what happens around them. She may not be any of those things. She might become a writer. She might become the next president, right? But all of these are opportunities for you to unlock learning for them. Unfortunately for us, the way that education is structured is that we constantly begin restricting people. We basically have a child that joins a school and then all of a sudden the options are being narrowed. But not just narrowed by their own societal experiences, but narrowed by their expectations, narrowed by the classroom, narrowed by teachers who are saying, you cannot do this. And why are they saying that? Because the child has not performed well. Why hasn't the child performed well? Because the teacher is not invested in the learning of the child. And so we create, we create an environment in which education becomes this process of memorizing information so that we can graduate the child to the next level. And many of us as adults, we are always asking ourselves, why did I study the parts of a plant? At what point is knowing that a petal has many colors and it's called variegated, at what point does that become useful to me? Because there is no why in your learning. Everything that you do in school is part of an expectation. It is not a purpose. So by creating a why, by changing this narrative for learning, you're opening up magical experiences. And robotics for older students creates stronger whys. Because if you are in a class of older students who are beginning to figure out what they want to do, what kind of careers that they want to pursue, you're giving them opportunities to practically touch, feel, and explore this career. When you're telling them today's exercise is going to be to get this robot to move from point A to point B, I'll always use that as a base example because the very basics of robotics is to get a machine to move from one place to another. So if you tell them that this is our goal, this is all we need to do, all right, you begin that journey, but again, like I said earlier, you're, you're introducing them to programming, electronics, ETC, but there is a sort of desire to continue this journey. Most of the people that we reach out, when we show them a robot that's doing something, immediately their first thought is, can I do this? How can I achieve this? How can I make this thing work? But along that journey, something very interesting happens, especially for all the students. They begin saying, if I can get this robot to move from point A to point B, can I get it to carry something on the farm at home? If I learn how to turn lights on and off because my robot needs to have lights on and off, can I build a traffic light for the community, for the road that my, at my place that has a lot of accidents? If this robot has a sensor that detects obstacles in its path, can I create something? There's a, a story I like telling is for a child deep, uh, in, in northern Uganda who after we had taught them how to use sensors, they said, wait, this thing can detect whether it is nighttime or daytime. And we said, yeah. And then he said, can I create it to open the gate at home so that the goats can go out so that I can sleep more, right? And it's a silly example, but it's an example of what possibilities get unlocked once students are exposed to a different form of learning, to a different form of engagement. And the, the possibilities are endless. We have examples of university students who come to our internship program and they are exposed to the basics of robotics, but we also challenge them to develop projects to solve the uh, problems around them. And so we have students who've experimented with, cre with creating walking canes for blind people so that if it senses that there's someone or something near it, it vibrates and the person can, take, can tell that there's a problem. We've had students do prototypes that detect how much rubbish has reached in a certain rubbish bin and then alerts the authorities to come and pick up the rubbish. We have such rich learning experiences for students based on this simple concept called robotics. And most people think, oh my God, it has to be complex, it has to walk, it has to be able to dance, or maybe it's even dangerous like Terminator or you know, all these 
all these cyborgs, but for us it's just simply a way of unlocking learning in ways that students are basically saying, yes, please teach me. And so the work that we do that is deeply reflected in how learning can be accelerated for young children and older children and even adults is work in which all that we are doing is basically opening doors and the tool that we are using is a robot. In all of our families, in all of our communities, in all of our schools, there are children who are stuck because they don't know the possibilities that are out there. They are waiting for their parents, their teachers, or their community leaders to come and show them the possibilities. And for us, we use robotics to help unlock those possibilities, irrespective of the age, irrespective of the child's aptitude for learning, because this child might actually be interested in robotics for a short period, and then they move on to something else. But in that time, we have shown them that, look, science has a purpose. Science has a reason for doing. It's not just a matter of cramming information because the teacher has told you to cram, because it might be useful at some point in your life. But here we are telling you there is a use for what you're learning. So even if you don't pursue sciences, you understand why we do sciences. But for that child who is determined and has seen that, wow, this is something that I can do, robotics creates an increasingly and incredibly world opening experience for them. And this world opening experience can be stretched from a child in Kampala to a child deep in the villages of Uganda. And we think that if we create more opportunities like that, if you empower your children to explore science through the world of robotics, you can rapidly accelerate how they learn, how they see the world, and how they engage with each other. And I'm very confident that somewhere within this beautiful continent of ours, there is someone who's going to change the world because someone went to their school or to their community and introduced them to a robotics class. Thank you.